Now we're on to a geometry problem, number 10. So let ABC be a triangle inscribed in circle W, or omega. So a common trick for drawing geometry diagrams is always draw the circle first, using like a compass or something, and then draw your three points after. It will make your life so much easier. So let's just do that, ABC. And we have our triangle. And now we're seeing the tangents of B and C intersect at a point P. Now this is actually a really cool common configuration in Olympia geometry, known as the Semedian. And this, this point is known as the Semedian point, or it's not the Semedian point, sorry. The Semedian point is something else, but if you draw this, then this line is called the Semedian, and it's a really cool configuration. And in fact, there's a really short solution by using the fact that this triangle, AB and P, ABP, is similar to A and the midpoint of BC and C, it's a common property of this. But let's explore a more normal solution that, you know, people who don't know this configuration can figure out too. So tangents. Whenever you see tangents, that's the kind of the first thing you have to think of is this really cool tangent property. So let's just draw this. It's always useful to draw these extra lines. And that is this angle is equal to this angle because this angle is half of this arc, which is also this angle. So let's call both of these X, right? Similarly, this angle is, if that's Y, this angle will be Y by the same tangent angle property. Really, really useful. Whenever you have a tangent, this should be like the first thing you think of, basically. Okay, so now you might be already seeing, aha, similar triangles, right? Similar, similar. And in fact, this is how power of a point can be derived in this case. So kind of the, the logic here is power over a point will give you information about this side length, uh, this length, and this length. Similar triangles will give you power over a point, but it will also give you one more important piece of information. The ratio of this to this, which is not part of the power of a point. So let's just call this x. Let's say this is 5x. Or you, you know what? We already use the variable x. Let's say 5a. ac is 10, so this will be... Well, take a look. The ratio of 5a to 5 is equal to this to this. But guess what? The ratio of this to this equals this tangent to ap. But guess what? Both tangents are equal. So this is going to be the same ratio. This is going to be 10a. And now that's pretty cool, right? Because we have 5a, 10a, and this angle in between, if you don't know, or do we know? We do know, because cyclic quad, so this is x plus y, and therefore this angle must be 180 minus x plus y. And just for convenience, convenience sake, let's just say x plus y is z, and it doesn't really matter if you do the x plus y, we just don't really need the individual angles x and y to deal with here. So this angle is 180 minus z, and now we use the law of cosines. We can easily find out the cosine of this angle using law of cosines in reverse, on ABC, right? We got 5 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 5 times 10 times cosine of x plus y, or cosine z, is 81. So 1, 2, 5 minus 81 equals 100 cosine z. So cosine z is 44 by 100, so 11 over 25. Cool. And then... Cosine z is 11 over 25, so you can find cosine 180 minus z is just going to be negative of that. So we, now we have 5a squared plus 10a squared minus 2, 5a, 10a, and then negative 11 over 25. That's equal to 81 as well. And guess what? We've got a one variable equation. We can solve for a. And this gives us 125a squared, the first two terms, and then minus, we'll just ignore the minuses because they cancel. That is 100a times 11 over 25, so that's 44a, sorry, 44a squared, I believe. And that's actually quite nice because guess what 125 plus 44 is? 169, and that is 13 squared. So we have 169a squared is 81, 
So A equals 9 over 13. And now we solve for A. Now we have to find, what do we have to find? AD. So this is D, right? So now, this should be not that hard, because now we know the ratio of similarity between these, this triangle and this triangle. We know that's A equal to A 9 over 13. So now take a look. We have AP over BD, or let's write it the other way. BD over AP is 9 over 13. Sorry, not B, BP over AP is 9 over 13. We also have that PD over BP is 9 over 13, right? Similar, just similar triangles. BP over AP, that's this over this, right? Because in this triangle, ratio BP is the longest side to this triangle, where AP is the longest side. And then PD, which is just like the middle longest side to the middle longest side of the outer triangle. And now we're looking for, what are we trying to find? AD. And that's just AP minus PD. So AP minus PD. Let's see. AP, AP equals 13 over 9 times BP. And then PD equals 9 over 13 times BP. So if we subtract them, we get AD equals 13 over 9 minus 9 over 13. That is 84, or no, no, 88 over 117 BP. And now we just have to find what is the value of BP. And take a look here. We got this is x, this is y, just by cyclic, you know, circle, inscribe, angle stuff. And therefore, this must be 180 minus 2z, right? Remember, z is just x plus y. It's just a short, short cut we're using here. 180 minus 2z. We know this is 9. So we can solve with the law of cosines for bp. So let's, let's do that. Or sorry, the law of sines. We have 9 over sine of 180 minus 2z, which is just sine of 2z. And that's equal to pc. What, what is pc? Oh, that's what we're trying to find. pc over sine of z. And now we use our handy double angle identity. 2 sine z, cosine z. pc over sine z. Sine z, sine z cancel. We know the value of cosine z, 11 over 25. So we get 9 over 22 over 25 equals PC, and this is just 25 over 22, 225 over 22. So then we multiply this, 88 over 117 times 225 over 22, we get 4, 4 there, and then also we can cancel out a factor of 9, 13, and then that would be what, 225? So 100 over 13, length of AD gives us an answer of 113. I hope you enjoyed the solution to a brilliant geometry problem on the Amy. Thanks for watching.